Welcome to today's Daily Walk in Wisdom, where we're almost at the conclusion of our uh, intrepid endeavor into understanding suffering and how we can connect God with that and connect to God through our trial and struggle and how we can best relate to the world around us and indeed to the struggle itself, how we can maintain composure and and grow through it all. We're just moving back for a moment into the uh, turmoil that Job has found himself in when he said something that was very important in Job 17 verse 3 he says give me O God the pledge you demand Job 17 3 give me O God the pledge you demand remember back in the beginning God called Job a perfect man perfection is God's expectation his ambition for all of us it is not a legalistic Old Testament perspective as though God is different in the Old Testament to how he is in the New that in the Old Testament he was the severe God but in the New Testament we have Jesus who is meek and mild and all loving it's not as though we have embraced a Marcionite theology and divide God and separate him, being bad and tough and hard going, and then through some uh, evolution suddenly becomes all nice and comforting. In the New Testament, God is the same. He's consistent all the way through. Um, this theme, though, of perfection pervades the whole of the Bible. Jesus said, be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, anyone who says, or who hears God say this kind of thing will find themselves in dismay and exclaim, how can anyone be that perfect? But how could God expect anything less from his creation. An artisan always searches for perfection. In Genesis, things started out in a chaotic fashion, and then God began to make something out of the chaos. And when he made something out of the chaos, he said, well, that's good. But by the time we arrive at the end of the created order, when God made man, he said, now that's very good. And the Bible declares that Job was a perfect man. Well, the devil said it's easy to be good when you haven't got a care in the world. The question was, could he maintain his perfection when all the commodities that made life com comfortable were removed? It's easy for us to think that we're good people when we're living in our modern Western culture with plumbing and electricity and refrigeration and food supply and infrastructure and order and civility. But should these comforts be removed, we would quickly observe the worst aspects of human personality. You can be a good Christian when you're not hungry, but can you maintain your composure on an empty stomach? When things are going wrong in your life, it can seem that God's expectations of you are hard and exacting. He expects you to forgive when someone has betrayed you. He expects you to be at peace when the world around you is crumbling. He expects the weak to say, I am strong, and the poor to say, I am rich. Now, Job came to the conclusion that the pressure, this kind of pressure, the pressure of having to remain perfect all the time, even through his greatest trial, was more than he could bear. And so he cries out, what God requires, God is going to have to supply. <clears throat> what God requires, God is going to have to supply. 
He says, give me, O God, the pledge you demand. This is really the answer to every human dilemma. God can ask anything of us because he backs up his own expectations by supplying us with the very ingredient that he's demanding. And when God calls on you to be perfect, he's asking you to show the world everything that God has placed in you. And God will give you many real life opportunities to prove whether or not you are indeed perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So when God says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another, he's saying that he's given you the means whereby you can love like he loved, because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Ghost. God gives what, you are, what he asks of you. If he asks you to forgive, it's because he has forgiven you, and thereby placed inside of you the forgiveness, the necessary forgiveness, so that you can be able to forgive. He has given you the nature of Christ, Christ in you, the hope of all glory. So if he asks you to love, it's because he's placed his love in you. If he asks you to give, it's because he's already supplied your every need and even given you the seed that he's asking you to sow. If he asks you to be perfect, it's because the Christ in you is already perfect. So he's asking you to reveal the Christ that is in you. I know that you aren't perfect, just like I know I'm not perfect. I know that I'm not perfect more than anybody knows that I'm not perfect. But Christ in me, he is perfection. So you're not expected to be human whilst trying to be godly. You're expected to live out the Christ in you nature. The secret to the Christian life is that the supernatural becomes natural in you as a result of the grace of God. And the experience of this becomes evident in the practical everyday details of life. It's especially evident during the times of trouble and suffering. Job's temptation, like all temptation, comes not just to cause us to do wrong things. It's not just a temptation to do something wrong. It's primarily to make us lose a hold of what God has placed inside of us. To lose connection with that which God has given to us. To lose connection with the Christ nature that has become yours through your relationship with Jesus. The moment you said yes to Jesus, he came into your life. He came into your life, Christ in you. And so temptation from the enemy is an attempt to disturb or to sever that connection. It's not just to get you to do something wrong. It's to get you to sever the connection like when the devil tempted Jesus to bow down and worship him. Jesus, who was determined to worship the Father, the enemy was tempting him to create a disconnection between Jesus and the Father. And he does the same to you, and he does the same with me. So when we encounter situations that create confusion, or when we're conf confronted by tragedy, or we find to our, to our disgust something, some evil thought, or some image that's portrayed across our mind, then you need to find within yourself the nature of Christ. And if you do that, you will find to your own amazement that we have within us the power to stay wonderfully poised in the center of the whirlwind. That's the extraordinary life of the saint. That's what Job ultimately discovered. And that's what God through this wonderful narrative, this story of Job is helping us to discover that in the midst of our whirlwind, in the midst of our struggle, 
that we can find a place of perfect peace right in the middle of it all. In the name of Jesus, I just speak into your situation right now and ask, Heavenly Father, that you would, that you would speak peace and you would speak life and love and everything that is necessary for you to be able to come through all of this and to see that Jesus who is in you, greater is he that is in you than anything that is going on in all the world around you. God bless you. We'll see you again a little later for some more wisdom from Job. Having to do two today because yesterday oh, I was finding myself embroiled in all other kinds of activities uh, that didn't allow me to have the time to put something across through social media. See you soon.